In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your static shots into shots with a little bit more movement. So we're going to give them some fake handheld camera movement. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and I've just got this very boring static shot of me just walking in and walking out of the frame. But the problem is this shot isn't really doing anything for me. I feel like a little bit of natural handheld camera movement would look good. So in order to do that, we want to go into the footage layer. So loop.mp4, we'll go into the drop down arrow, go transform, and you want to go down to position. Now you can do this manually by creating a brand new keyframe on position, moving over, moving over, and just adjusting the position over time so that you end up with this slightly unpredictable camera movement look. But the problem is if you've got an extended take, that's going to take forever. So instead, let's create an expression. So we're going to hold down the option button on Mac and then we'll press the brand new keyframe icon. So that stopwatch icon on position and that will load up this expression window. Now you want to delete that transform.position expression and we're going to go wiggle open bracket 2 comma 20 and we'll just click out of there. It's really important that you click out because if you press enter, it will create a new line in the expression. So click out and we'll play this back. There you go. You can see we've got some natural handheld camera movement on our footage now. Although the problem is we're starting to see the edge of the frame. Now there's two ways to fix this. First of all, you could just scale in. So you go down to scale and you just increase the scale to 110, for example, or 105 if that's a bit too much and that will get rid of that. Or alternatively, you can keep the scale at 100 and we'll go into effects and presets. We'll search for motion tile. That should be stylized motion tile. Drop this onto your footage and then you can go into output width 300, output height to 300. Then you want to select mirror edges. And as you can see, those edges have now been filled in. So if we go back from the very beginning, you can see if we turn this off, let's go to a point where it's more extreme. So there's this black bar at the bottom here. You can see with it off, you've got this black bar. But when I turn this motion tile back on, it's filled in the edge of the frame. So if we go really close in, you can see the difference. So it's essentially just mirroring what's on the edge of the frame. Now, if you're looking out for it, you can spot that. And you really do spot that in fine patterns, like in these cobble flooring down at the bottom, you can see that pattern starting to emerge. However, though, if you've got a less distracting pattern, though, then it can actually be a very awesome way of keeping the full size of the video without having to scale in. So you can either scale in or you can do the motion tile effect on your footage. But if you wanted to change the handheld movement, so if you wanted more shake or you wanted the shake to be quicker, then all you have to do is go into the expression and change these two numbers. So the first number will change to five and see how this affects. There you go. We'll turn off the motion tile for now just because that is slowing down the render. There you go. You can see that's all of a sudden really agitated. It's a lot quicker. You can really see this if we pull this first number up to 20. There you go. You can see it has sped up now. There is a lot more aggressive movement, but the problem is it's not moving around in the frame enough. So your first number is going to correlate to the speed of the movement, how frequently the camera is moving. And then the second number, let's pull the first one down to five. The second number is the amount it will travel. So if we pull this down to one, you can see it's barely going to move. But if we pull this up to 50, for example, you can see this is going to be wiggling the camera all over the place. So let's just turn on that motion tile and see how that looks with the motion tile effect applied. You can see it's barely even noticeable that we've added in this motion tile effect, especially when you combine it with this aggressive camera movement. However, though, I feel like that is probably going to be too aggressive most of the time. That would work if you were shooting an action film. But if you just want to add a little bit of natural handheld camera movement to your footage, I would recommend going for maybe two and 15 let's go there you go you can see this instantly looks a lot more natural it feels like somebody has actually filmed this 
Now this effect is essentially like you've got the camera on the tripod and you're just moving the pan and the tilt axis. It doesn't make it look like you're orbiting around or physically moving in the space. It's just moving the pan and the tilt head on the tripod. So if you want camera movement in your footage and you know you want that parallax effect, you want to move left to right, up and down in the physical space, then I would really recommend shooting that in person making sure you get that on the day. However, if you just wanted a little bit of pan and tilt natural camera movement, then you can get away with it in Adobe After Effects. Now you can do this in Adobe Premiere. However, you can't use expressions in Premiere and this motion tile effect isn't available in Premiere either which means if you were doing this in Premiere, you'd have to do this manually by hand, moving the position keyframes every few frames, and then you'd have to zoom in on the scale, therefore reducing quality. So if you're doing the fake handheld camera movement, I would always recommend running it through After Effects rather than Premiere. Now, before we carry on with this video, I'm first just going to take a quick break to talk about the Brooker Films courses. And in particular, I want to mention the After Effects course. Over on Skillshare, I have a two hour plus Adobe After Effects course, which covers everything from importing your footage to creating new shapes, masking, green screening, rotoscoping. It covers everything you could ever need when you're first getting started into Adobe After Effects. So if you're new to After Effects or you're just trying to brush up on some new skills, then click the link in the description below to check out the course. Now back to the video. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.